This here is the new Nissan Aria and I can already tell you so far it is a huge game changer for Nissan as a brand. It will shake up also the differences between let's say a normal volume brand and a premium brand but can it be a game changer for the whole EV market? We'll find out together with Thomas and Autogefühl for you. Here in the front the Nissan Aria shows this closed EV front grille a Japanese styling pattern here a little bit hidden behind with slim daytime running lights and also full LED lamps. This is here the dark blue color. We also have a dark green color for you and a copper color. These are the colors we have seen so far but of course there will be more of that. It is a compact SUV or crossover as you want to take it and the interesting thing with Nissan is they have dominated the EV market with the Nissan Leaf in the very early stages. Then came Tesla, then came all the other manufacturers can they now strike back with the Aria? Well, it might have a big chance for that. Why? Let's take a closer look here. 19 inch wheels. These are the ones with the aerodynamic design. More balloonish tires definitely, but better riding comfort. However, you can also get 20 inch wheels if you want a, you know, just more prominent styling. Then you can see here the wheel arches are painted in black so this also gives a sporty look and then there's a very very sleek side profile right here look at that so more a crossover look and they've put the batteries in the lower end of the vehicle we can also say, see a cutaway model there and they have two battery sizes either 63 kilowatt hours net or 87 kilowatt hours net. We have the one with the small battery here today but at a late stage we'll also drive the bigger battery. Subscribe if you haven't done so far and the range will be very interesting. I can promise you that already right now. Towards the rear we can see there are interesting design lines and the overall length is 4 meters 60 that is 181 inches. As for the rear design, modern and sleek, light strip here going all the way across the vehicle. And on the technology side, it's very interesting. You have the front wheel drive model, you have the all wheel drive model, then with the two electric motors. And the acceleration difference is 7.5 seconds to 6 seconds for the all wheel drive model, 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles. They plan to do an even quicker performance model but that is actually pushed away for now because they say there wouldn't be a huge demand for that. And top speed is also difference. The front wheel drive model 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour or then the all wheel drive model 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. As for suspension there's one base suspension that are going all across all models. No adaptive suspension However, there's a multi-link rear axle and that is a more elaborate rear axle. Let's see in the driving part how it plays out as for comfort. And recharging here, what is kind of very special for this mid-size segment here, you will have a 22 kilowatt three-phase charging for AC, that's great, and 130 kilowatt DC charging, but with a good charging curve we can also show that charging curve and that means that from 10 to 80 percent state of charge the big battery you'll charge in about 35 minutes. Should you wonder about the trunk? No there is none just equipment here underneath fluids and so on so no trunk whatsoever and should you wonder about the name by the way Aria the thing is it's supposed to be you know derived from you know Sanskrit word of like noble and the problem is for a German market when you say Aria in German that's the exact pronunciation of Arian and that is of course another good combination for a car on the German market mm. so the Germans then in their market try to say rather Aria so it's differently pronounced and there's no you know mismatching with that but overall I think as for name pick maybe not the best idea if it in some way can be you know connoted to Arian so yeah what do you think about it moving towards the interior that key fob is slim and light and high quality and no high gloss piano lacquer awesome then door closing sound very good low frequency sonorous I really like that and Look at that, the interior materials here at the doors, this is then the Alcantara equipment, the microfiber equipment. You have it here at the inside of the doors, either here like this in bright or in plain black is also available. Soft touch above that, 
like here good quality as well then this is a little bit harder then here you have a soft leather red again and also the quality of the buttons right here everything is really nice and even more so look at that when i lower the window now a little bit for the front and the rear this is here a dual insulation glass in the front but even at the rear doors and then look at this lounge interior it looks really amazing doesn't it again you can also have this seat here in complete black and also with a black microfiber here then with a beautiful beige or bright or maybe ivory color microfiber what what do, what would you call it leatherette outside so this seat is animal free and i think a beautiful combination blue exterior then this bright interior that is really amazing so this would be my favorite setup the base seat would be that you have fabric where you have microfiber here and leather outside this then here yeah, towards mi middle or high trim and the highest sadly it's the highest is an animal skin pack sadly that they still offer it in 2022 in an electric vehicle but most vehicles will be sold like this with a bright or black microfiber also in the us it's available the steering wheel is animal skin wrap as well at this moment they're also working at alternatives the screens two times 12.3 inch more than horizontal setup are they of any use we'll find out very soon seating position higher than you might expect from the outside looks actually so it might look like a crossover from the outside but seating position here so electric controls seating position wise it's more an suv indeed and for me with one meters 89 or six foot two there's just some headroom left and this panoramic roof here and also the head-up display is actually standard for all models except the very base model and the interesting thing is here this is a panoramic roof with a shade that's better for example than uh, with the teslas where it gets really really hot and you can also open that so most of these modern evs they have fixed panoramic roofs and maybe sometimes even not a cover and here they have both you can open it and you do have a cover and it's actually quite substantial that opening as well so yeah that's really nice that they have that and it feels very elaborated so far comfortable seating we'll see how it turns out while driving this by the way also equipped here with the optional bose sound system and why don't we test the sound directly right here right now let's see about that so that's isn't it Hmm, wow, that's a great surround sound, right? So, I can really say, this is a premium vehicle and it does compete with the Audi BMW and Mercedes, no doubt. Look at this lower middle console. It will have a special, actually two special features coming up very soon. Here, first of all, this is the shifting lever, drive mode, reverse, park. And then here is like this matte wood, really nice. And then adaptive cup holders. Then you have these capacitive buttons, but at least not on high gloss black. So for the driving modes, for the e-pedal, how this will affect driving, we'll soon see. And this is one of the special features, soon coming. And then soft touch leather right here for the armrest it up yeah, it's actually well attached and then is this uh, inductive charging pad right here another storage area and now comes the first special feature because we can actually move this whole middle console we can move it backwards to have a little bit more space in the front if it's that useful i don't know <laughs> it's a cool feature and it reveals here in the front that we have a connector box usb-a usb-c either wired or wireless connector for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can choose that actually. But most of the time that you can control these things better, you will probably move it forward again. Yeah, would you actually use it or would you have it in the backward position? Tell me in the comments actually. And then there's this you know, second control. So they do give you some haptic feedback when you press them. And when you press open here, look at that, what, what happens then. There we have another. <laughs> Why would you do that electric? I don't know, but and you can also even hold it in between like this. That's funny, isn't it? And then there's a manual opening of this one or you just leave it open like this and you can always, you know, put it back and out again. This is maybe showing off to your friends or, or so. Um, yeah, what would you put in there? 
and here the contrast electric versus manual opening this middle one then the classic glove box i think that's just better when you have the simple and plain manual control because here your knees touch it then right and left and then you have to close it first and that takes a while and so on and yeah not the ideal solution i think this is just easier and also when you think about you know maybe you're closing it and you're not watching and maybe like you know someone on the passenger side maybe the kids play around with that and then they hold this and it's like ah, 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 ah. <sighs> yeah that's not that pleasant indeed uh, it does not really stop um so uh yeah you might say oh that's a dumb thing to do the dumb thing uh, to, to, to test here actually but you remember when you know when someone has kids this will happen at some point and so um yeah not a fan of it looks cool but not a fan of the electric solution here interior overview two times 12.3 inch horizontal stress zoom on to the screens here once again the soft touch microfiber beautiful and bright would be then again black in the black styling and then the copper accentuation here goes all the way horizontal also here with these air vents and they thought about a manual volume jog that's great to have and also for muting like this that's good the, the climate controls are capacitive yes they do give some kind of feedback but the beautiful matte wood area here this is very very cool so um yes i don't like capacitive bs buttons hashtag capacitive bs however the integration is pretty cool you know and when you shut down the vehicle like this it goes kind of almost invisible and then when you start up the vehicle here they are backlit so it is beautifully done no doubt about that um, you can also more or less control it while driving it's a little bit complicated with this yeah you know you have to press it yeah i mean you don't have to press it that hard actually so a slight press is actually enough it's not the most intuitive, let's say. It's not the best to control while driving, but it's somewhat okay and it looks amazing. Steering wheel has electric control in and out and also up and down. Here is a well-equipped vehicle. And the strange thing is it goes extremely high, higher than anyone would need it to, but it doesn't go that low. So for me, it shouldn't go that high, but it should go a little bit lower actually. But that way it's still fine and on the steering wheel it's a mix of um, capacitive buttons and real jogs for example so overall actually fine also to control the digital instruments and stuff you can change the view you can have a bigger digital speed view in there or you can then for example have some information like this you can also have the gps or even the map then right here in but here sadly when i activate the apple carplay map then the gps view here and the instruments just disappears basically let's see if i go back to the car internal map uh, it doesn't really reappear so maybe i have to cancel then the route guidance here first here we go so and now when I've cancelled the Apple CarPlay guidance, then the map is back here again. Head-up display, also standard for most model trims and also with some basic GPS guidance. The screen here with the CarPlay integration, or then also Android Auto if you're using the Android phones. And you can always dim the screen here with the hotkey and then you can also um, go plus minus, change the brightness of that. And always have a hotkey here for the camera system. The resolution could be a little bit better. There's this fake drone view from above. The main menu looks like this. That one doesn't look that modern actually, so it could look more modern. Um, the responsiveness is better than we know so far. We are around the Stockholm area today, so best greetings to all our Swedish fans. Yeah, most of the time you will probably use Android Auto or um, or the Apple CarPlay. They say, by the way, they have a dynamic route planning also for the charging stations, by the way, but it does not do the preheating. You either have to floor it out then or do the preheating manually, actually. So this is one thing to consider and you can also search for charging stations then nearby. They have a cooperation with plug surfing for that. However, the infotainment system 
overall I think could be a little bit more modern from its looks but I think you'll get along and most of us are using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in, uh, in our vehicles anyway nowadays. And hidden here in that lower corner really nice luxury features heated steering wheel or automatic function the same also goes automatic function for the heated and cooled seats or then manual in three levels and that's such a rare combination here microfiber seats in combination with cooling awesome ready for summer the back mirror is either classic or digital like this in this case it might make sense because the view to the rear is not the best where the normal mirror here you actually do see better and then you can also adjust it for example move the whole image up or down depending on what you want to, what you want to see and also if you have for example the back loaded all the way you know cross through the window you still can see through the rear by this digital solution look at that rear area especially even more beautiful in that bright microfiber styling and um, let me first show you here when i'm behind the driver's seat here ample of lacroom that's awesome and an interesting fabric alike cover of the rear seat this is such a premium material use and animal free besides the steering wheel it's really awesome then they're using the ev platform there's no middle tunnel whatsoever also real buttons here for the seat heating in the rear usb-c usb-a charger then the matte wood this is one of the best ev interiors i've seen so far from all evs actually so i'm really amazed by that headroom wise it works it's not the highest vehicle but it definitely works for four even for five yeah it works for five tall adults maybe not the most ample headroom than in the rear but it does work for five tall adults indeed then isofix at the outside seats each it's a comfortable seating position and once again also great material quality is also with this perforation that it's more breathable and here in the middle part you can fold down the armrest and these cup holes are not adaptive but they're quite deep so they should hold most bottles actually tight so I'm very impressed by this interior. Trunk or boot area, 470 liters for the front wheel drive, 415 for the all-wheel drive. That is 17 versus 15 cubic feet. The width here, easily, a little bit more than a meter or 40 inches even. So that's actually quite good. The length, a little bit less than that, 95 centimeters or let's see it right here, around 37 inches. The height here is about 65 centimeters or 26 inches unless you use a little bit more of that lower space here. You could store a cable right here. You can put this one here upright as a splitter, but you can also have cables here right and also on the left side. So they thought about enough space for different charging cables even. You do fold the seats from the rear seating area actually there's no possibility to do it from the trunk but the overall length in here maximum length is one uh, about 180 or 70 71 inches welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the nissan area and here we go to the sports mode and show you a first acceleration with the front wheel drive model let's go That was a 0 to 80 kilometers an hour. Now I have to reduce the speed and I also set the steering wheel that I can drive better. I have set the steering wheel in a way that you could see the speed better from that from that camera angle actually. Yeah, it was substantially quick. You maybe heard it also. I had some wheel spin in the front and that is the thing with the front wheel drive model. That can happen although it was dry now so much power here with the electric vehicles and when you just the front axle yeah actually then with the electric vehicles the rear wheel drive is to me actually better because the car accelerates the weight shifts to the back and also for the turning circle rear wheel drive is usually better well but you can also get the all-wheel drive model and then it's also 1.5 seconds quicker in the acceleration figure and you can also use torque vectoring so it will have more agility than also in the corners however for most situations the 
the front drive is enough and you don't always need to accelerate that hard. The acceleration itself is definitely sufficient as we've seen so far. Well, after this harsh acceleration, um, we will also reset the trip meter. And then we can also tell you something later on about the overall consumption, a realistic one when we drive in a rather normal way. Let's take it that way. So here we go back again. We have a low center of gravity. Batteries are in the center. That's usual with these EVs and that gives us a lot of agility. So it is quite high from a seating position, but it feels in quite sporty while driving. That's something we know from these EVs. The steering itself, it is pretty light here in this low degree angles actually, and then it gets a little bit harder to the sides. So overall not too bad and gives you also a good feeling of the vehicle. The driving modes, here in the sports mode, you have more throttle input in the standard mode. It's a little bit drawn back. And in the eco mode then, the throttle pedal is reduced as for the intake. It won't make the biggest difference. And when you use the pin down, it always goes fast. But of course, you could switch it a little bit. Most of the time, probably people will stay in the standard mode anyway. Between the D and the B mode, here with the shifting lever, let's see the difference when I'm in the D mode. It does some recuperation, <laughs> that's a funny huh? motorcycle. And when you put to put to the B mode, actually, let's see. It's not a significant difference, actually. It does recuperate a little bit. D mode then a little bit less. So that is, let's say, a small step. A bigger step indeed is this E pedal. You press this and then you have significant recuperation. So if you rather want one pedal driving feeling like now, then you're going with the E pedal mode. Let's see if E pedal and D or B in combination makes any difference. So here now E pedal, half recuperation, B mode. Ah, that's probably the maximum. Then it doesn't make any difference anymore. So it seems that they have made it like D, B, E pedal, like, you know, from the recuperation strength of all. So first impression, likable driving situation. You have a nice panoramic front windscreen. They are using for the heated windscreens, these fine heating lines. Mm, to me, that's not the best, actually. I rather prefer these heating foils. They are quite effective, yes. And especially when you think about here in a country like Sweden, where we had these Japanese style background, but we're still in Sweden, so <laughs> it was a little bit confusing there, maybe. However, I always see, especially against um, white clouds then in the sky, so I always see it. Some don't see these heating lines, I always see it, and to me it's terribly annoying. Some agree, some say, ah, I don't see it anyway, what about you? Tell me in the comments. Um, not sure if you can also get it without heat windscreen, but most Swedes, of course, will actually go for the heat windscreen. Definitely makes sense. Controlling the car while driving here with the heated uh, heating control. It is okay, you know, it's okay, but still a turning dial would be better. It looks awesome, definitely it feels great, but not the best solution. Um, you don't have to press it that hard, but controlling it while driving, it's, you know, you, you also don't know like, oh, what am I hitting and where am I hitting it? So you tend to look at it. And the moment you look at it, it's of course always a little bit distracting. Here we go. So, steering feel, by the way, also switches from the driving mode. Standard mode is really light. And in the sport mode, it gives you a little bit more feedback. So you can also adjust it by that, actually. As for suspension, you remember we have one standard suspension and the Multilink rear axle. So far, so good. When we had some bumps in the road, was no problem actually, especially here with the 19 inch wheels. We have some more dampening from the tire. So when you go for the 20 inch wheels, you will lose some comfort, but you gain visuals, right? So yes, the car does look better with 20 inch, definitely. Mm, it is always some kind of trade-off. I think it would still work. 
But the question is what is more important to you, that the ride is a little bit softer or that you have a cooler look than from the wheels. You can decide that for yourself. Most of the time you're driving in the car, right? So um, maybe then the driving comfort thing will be more important to you. But it looks better. Mm, yeah, it's always a question of that. I really like the panoramic roof that we can also open it and we have the shade when it gets too hot. Most of the time not a big problem in Sweden here, but of course when you live in a US state like in you know, Texas or something, Arizona, then you will have a problem with these roofs that do not have cover. Now we are on a little bit quicker road and we have reasonable acceleration. It's also very well insulated. Here now 70 kilometers an hour. It's very silent in here. It's a very relaxing ride. You know, with its suspension, the noise insulation, the rather soft steering. Everything works together very well. So indeed. I was at first skeptical in the way of yeah, we didn't hear from Nissan for for some time. Yeah, there was the new Qashqai, of course. Qashqai is always a, a very relevant car, yes. Then there was a new Juke at some point. But there, you know, there wasn't much fuss about, um, you know, about, about Nissan. And now they're back with the Aria here. And yeah, they are really back indeed. So really stepping up the level from the Leaf. And they have a very serious competitor here. And if you think about the main competitors, VW ID4, Tesla Model Y, Ford Mustang Mach E, Volvo XC40 or, or C40, a little bit smaller of course, Ionic 5, Kia EV6, so Skoda Enyaq, Audi Q4 e-tron. And there are so many competitors of this one here and they're all somewhat in the same segment, somewhat in the same pricing, power, battery. Here they have a little bit bigger battery than the competition and indeed that pays off and they also move this car towards the premium segment indeed with all the materials and you know stuff here with the microfiber really stepping up the game. The lower armrest here is a little bit low like the inside of the doors I, I'm not sure like should I put my arm here very low or rather put it like here like yo what's up styling. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the right one armrest is, is okay, but the, the left one is um, not that suitable, especially in combination that the steering wheel doesn't go that low. So that's something I, I do realize here. And then there's this part, this one hard part you know, uh, below the Alcantara that you do hit with your arm. So that's one hit and miss. So one of the few deals I've discovered now while driving that could be made better. But there are so many things that are so well executed here. And well, exterior wise, it's always a personal preference. But we have seen that so many vehicles, they look kind of similar, especially if you compare this one to the ID4 or something. From the interior, it's a great build quality. The software is maybe not the best, most modern, but also not worse than the competition and better than some of the competitors. Everything is well usable and you can always use the Apple CarPlay Android Auto integration for that. The execution interior, look and feel is really, really nice. User interface, at least we have also the manual volume knob and so on. And we have these backlit uh, capacitive buttons. That's also better than most of the competitors. And also the driving feeling is both comfortable and sporty. So in no way would it be behind the competitors and in a lot of ways even be, you know, in front of them. So far in this segment here, my favorites were the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Kia EV6, and the Ionic 5, of course, together along with that, but I found the EV6 a little bit better. And I really like the Volvo XC40 or C40. Only thing is that their range is a little bit behind the competition. And this Nissan Aria here can easily match that. Um, so I can already tell you right now, from driving also now, this can sure be one of the top picks in that, let's say at this moment, rather standard EV segment. Of course, it comes at the cost of that the Nissan Aria is not a cheap Nissan, not a very affordable Nissan. It more has the same price than also the premium competition. But the price 
especially if you compare the competitors there, as I just um, mentioned, is indeed justified. So that's perfectly fine. What about the assistant systems? We can set here on the steering wheel, here, cruise control, change and set the speed. Why is that keeping it? Let's see, distance to the counter of us. There we go. There we go. There's the active cruise control. The other one was the speed limiter. So now, setting the speed. Now let's see about the active lane keeping assist. Green steering wheel symbol. How smooth is it? Very smooth. Look at that. Like not a harsh steering reaction. Everything very smooth. That's actually pretty good. Then we have the blind spot monitor. There's a red triangle in the side mirrors each. Also reacting very efficiently, very nicely. Yeah, there we go. So, assistance systems wise, this car is checking all boxes indeed. And we have a very good and comfortable experience. Cornelius? Yes. He's already sleeping. I think that's, no. that's, a, that's a, good, a good sign. No, I'm listening to what you are telling. Ah. Closing, closing his eyes and listening. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> so what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like this car. He likes it. Yeah. yeah. So for as a passenger, relaxing. Yeah. G forces, insulation. Yeah. yeah. That's always a good sign, you know. When when your passenger is relaxed, it shows that the insulation is good. That not so many G forces are applied. Of course, it's always the thing about learning to drive EVs, that you don't have harsh acceleration and harsh recuperation on the passenger, so you rather try to be smooth with your pedal, especially when you're in this here e-pedal or one-pedal driving mode, then of course it plays a major role that you can control it in a very smooth way. Other than that, you can of course also deactivate the e-pedal mode and then rather do the recuperation with the brake pedal. It will do the same recuperation, it's just a different method of doing so, actually. So, oh, there's a, are, we, are we on the bus lane, right? Our Swedish fans will probably say, like, ah, Thomas, that's a fail. Yeah, it looked like I would have, um, yeah, need to go on, on the very right lane. But, yeah, but that's bu ah, it's bus and taxi, right? Yeah, we have, do we have that in Germany? Sometimes, not that frequently, but sometimes indeed. So we're getting off the motorway now. Here in Sweden, we cannot drive that fast on the motorway anyway. We have to wait for a German high-speed motorway test to test more motorway. Now we head more towards some city traffic. And um, let's take a first look here at the, at the consumption figure. So here we go. And yeah, we've been doing some nice cruising now on the motorway and that is some 15 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers average that's indeed very very good so we'll drive even further and then we'll tell you also later on the figure what it is in 100 miles and what this would mean as a concise range in kilometers and in miles here for the front wheel drive plus small battery remember you can go front wheel drive big battery and all-wheel drive big battery. So these combinations are available. Initially they thought about also combining the, um, the, the, the all-wheel drive with the small battery. They got rid of that. Initially, they, what is going okay. on there? Oh, that's Nissan Kasha losing its, its wheel arch yeah. cover. Interesting. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Oh, uh, yeah. Must have hit something like a like a side pole or something. I haven't seen that. Also, one other. You know, sometimes strange things happen with with cars. And you're like, is the driver not seeing that? And like, why don't they stop? And then yeah. But sometimes people are also driving with open hatches, and you feel like <laughs> like are you guys seeing that that you're driving with an open hatch. Yeah, that that's that happens from time to time. So far, very very efficient result and. We will drive even further now, and I'm really looking forward to what the final consumption result is. But as for the first estimations, it really seems that it does also tick the efficiency box. 
and then you can really say this is one of the best EV picks. Uh, e this is one of the best EV picks now. Yeah. But what about the final results? Let's take a look. Well, we did have some downhill, but then we also went uphill again. But look at that. 13 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That's 20 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. That's sensational. Super efficient. Okay, ideal conditions, best temperatures for the batteries, very low speed limits, smooth driving, constant speed, maybe a little bit of topography change here and there. So most ideal situations for a good energy consumption. However, still, this is so efficient. At this moment here under these ideal conditions, this would be more than 450 kilometers or almost 300 miles for the small battery. And for the big battery, the same consumption would even mean that you can actually score some 400 miles or more than 650 kilometers. That's one of the best results ever for an electric vehicle. And now you will check out the big comparison EV episode or also one of the main competitors, the Kia EV6 directly.